Um, we've been fascinated by global Pentecostalism, uh, which is, I think, probably the most explosive, explosively growing movement in the history of religion. Unbelievable development, uh, which some of you, I'm sure, are very familiar, although uh, uh, David Martin, who's sort of the dean of Pentecostal studies, or pioneer of Pentecostal studies, wrote a little book about the revolution that was not supposed to happen. Uh, intellectuals don't like Pentecostalism. No, not just in the United States. They don't like it in, in, in other parts of the world. They didn't, this is a revolution that wasn't supposed to happen. It's now so huge that it's very difficult to deny. Now, um, if, you develop, if you enter into the Pentecostal world, which is not my world, but I'm empathetic, uh, with any degree of um, curiosity, uh, what strikes one, I think, is that, it, that people in this world very effectively combine a, a very supernaturalist religion uh, with um, very successful, usually within limits if they're very poor people, uh, attempts to, uh, to have social mobility into a modernizing society. And uh, David Martin, among other people, and I, I agree with him, uh, to see Pentecostalism as essentially a modernizing phenomenon. And uh, one can go into great detail describing the structure of this, uh, put it in terms of an image, uh, at the center of Pentecostalism in most of the world is healing. Not just healing in a spiritual sense, but physical healing. Uh, and in some instances, raising people from the dead. Let's not go into the question to what extent this is real or, or, fan or a fantasy, but if people believe it, it is real to them. And at the same time, uh, I think one can make a very good case that much of Pentecostalism uh, uh, is a uh, renewal, a replication of what make Max Weber wrote about as the Protestant ethic. Um, just to give you one uh, anecdote, the last uh, very full national study we did of Pentecostalism out of our institute at Boston University was in South Africa. And uh, it was a very, very interesting study. And uh, we, we published a little book in South Africa. I don't think it was much noticed anywhere else. And we had a press conference, um, which was also very interesting. Uh, almost all the black uh, journalists had Pente Pentecostals in their families, and the couple were Pentecostal. None of the whites, not only were they not Pentecostal, they knew very little about it, which is interesting. Well, we, some of us went to a big Pentecostal mega church on the outskirts of Johannesburg called the Rema Church, uh, which was fascinating. And uh, uh, one of the details, and it's a huge church, there were about 7,000 people at every service. Uh, four every Sunday, three, uh, in, uh, two in English and two in African languages, as I recall. The congregation, is a, was a, when we went that Sunday, about 85% black, 15% uh, white and colored and everything else, which is about the national proportion. And it went on for endlessly mind-blowing, noisy music. And then came the preacher, who was white, or was then, this is about three years ago, uh, by background, a bodybuilder, a kind of Pentecostal Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and uh, he had a very charismatic sermon. And uh, the sermon had two themes. One was, God does not want you to be poor, which I think he quite consciously said, we didn't interview him, uh, compared with the Catholic notion of a preferential option for the poor. God doesn't want you to be poor. And secondly, you can do something about it. And what he thought you could do about it was uh, Weberian, if you will. In fact, the church has a little business school. It was a Sunday, so the school was closed, but we got a brochure. And of course, they don't train people to work for a multinational corporation, but to run a little business, a, a beauty salon or a garage or whatever. How, how do you do this? Um, well, we left, and none of us there were, um, were uh, personally involved in that kind of religion. In fact, the woman who is in charge of the, um, 
of the uh, center with which we work in South Africa is, uh, is a very secular Jew. And, and I called her, uh, well, said she's religiously tone deaf. Uh, and they were terribly excited. And she was very excited by the sermon. And uh, we asked ourselves, do we quarrel with this message? And we all said, no, no, I don't think God wants people to be poor. If they are poor, if you're a Christian, you think God will be with you and make, help you co cope with your misfortune. But God doesn't want you to be poor. And there are things you can do about poverty. We know pretty much what they are. Easier done in some places than others. Um, okay, uh, Pentecostalism and modernity is a topic from which I learned a lot.